what is the difference between uh, what is the difference in physical preparation for MMA and for example team sports in which you were involved in is it harder to prepare for MMA fights now, now I know I don't think you ever prepared an MMA fighter but you have trained MMA and and you are uh, aware of the physical needs for an MMA fight so can you can you tell us this I think the differences and uh, similarities are you we shouldn't look at them alike Either there's uh, similarities or differences. I think we, we need to look at them as like a Venn diagram. So there's like a shared area between them. And um, the, the shared thing is that we are all humans. So we have, I would say, fundamental movement patterns that, that are shared across sports. You need to run, you need to jump, you need to throw, you need to punch, you need to kick. And there are nuances between sports. So that's quite shared across multiple sports. Uh, it, it's just human thing. You know, you need to run, you need to sprint. I mean, hopefully you're not going to sprint in the cage, but sprinting as a as a as an activity is quite you know useful and important in, in physical preparation. So that's one thing that you know uh, that's a shared area. That that's a, like I say a com commonality. And of course, you know, being a a quality mover, just being you know making sure someone doesn't get injured. So uh, that's also quite common across sports. Uh, what I would say that the major differences are, um, you know, the cultural things, uh, the competition calendar, the, you know, the way the competition organized, and, and psychological things. So, um, uh, for example, in team sports, you have a competition every, you know, once or twice or even three times a week, where in, in um, combat sports that happen every, every few months or once a year or twice a year for a high level. Uh, so that, that's one of the major differences, the way you approach uh, the competition stuff and also it's combat sports are individual sports so it's your your mental i would say toughness even that's like a bu bastardized word recently so your mental toughness must be much much higher because you cannot rely on any uh teammate teammate to to you know help you out unless you're doing this team mma in russia of course right right so <laughs> so uh and again cultural things like for example soccer uh take example for example soccer so Soccer, we all we all think it's the like same game, but it's it's a different. It's played in different cultures across the world, and coaches uh, come from different countries. So soccer coaches come to train different um, teams or, or uh, soccer teams in different countries, and they clash. So it's the same sport, but it's a different culture. So uh, that's one thing that that needs to be taken into account. So pretty much we have a, like individual or athlete-based differences or and similarities. We have cultural similarities and differences, and we have a task uh, or competition calendar uh, differences and similarities. So again, <laughs> I'm not giving a straight, straight answer because I don't, I don't think there's like a straight and concrete answer. So the thing is, you know, you don't need to, you don't need to understand the, the commonalities, the fundamental human movements, uh, but you also need to be involved in a sport to understand nuances. So that comes back to this having a skin in a game. So. Um, uh, for a strength conditioning coach working at combat sports, I don't think you should be a or should have been a competitor or having fights. But you need to, you know, you need to roll with the guys, uh, you know, spar with the guys. You, then you started un understanding a little bit. Maybe having some amateur matches and stuff, you start to understand the um, nuances of that sport and, and cultural basis of that sport, rather than only focusing on how much you bench, how much you squat, and you know how much you run 1500 meters. So. Right. And again, we come to the subject of uh, skin in the game. Can you elaborate a little bit of your, on that subject? We both read uh, Nicholas Nassim Taleb, which is where the expression comes from. Uh, so uh, can you elaborate? So imagine you ask someone to uh, invest in, in certain fonts and he gives you this elaborate answer. Uh, but then you ask him, did, did you put your own money in that font? And then he say no. And then you're like, there's no risk for you. So skin in the game pretty much means that if it costs, if it's going to cost me, it's going to cost him as well. So it means that uh, if, if something's going to hurt myself, it's going to hurt you as well. And if you, if you gain benefit, I'm going to gain benefit. So uh, uh, your decision making is going to be different uh, when you are not involved in a, in a game. So uh, if I'm um, meaning the adv the advice giver should also be uh, one foot in the game, pretty one much foot sure. in the game, and also uh, he should depend on the outcome as well, right? Exactly right. So uh, if, if he's giving advices on the internet, and um, if if a fighter wins or loses, 
it's not gonna cost him. And most of the most of the what happens mostly, we have this uh, survivor bias. So most of the coaches just push their the the successful stories out, but they hide the uh, uh, unsuccessful stories. So that's one of the biases as well. But if it hurts him, hurts him monetary or um, you know. Um, Reputation. reputational wise then his decision making is going to be different and uh, we see that a lot like we, we have a, a, a coaches working in the off season with, with the guys and they just care about you know getting money and getting them fit pretty much but uh, it doesn't cost them or it doesn't affect them if the athlete is going to uh, win or lose the championship or, or a match in season right? in season right yeah right right shooting takedowns like the double leg are the most widely used takedowns in MMA. If you want to add them to your arsenal, check out this instructional. The link is in the description.